Valerie Norman, Director of Product Development from Canada Post, is going to share a series of must-knows for merchants to consider when it comes to order fulfillment, all to exceed the growing expectations of the consumer while reducing time and headaches as well. Please welcome Valerie. try to change your mind a little bit today. So um, shipping is a little bit of the necessary evil of e-commerce. Uh, when we set up a store, we spend a lot of time thinking about the marketing, the acquisition, and then you get your first order and there's a little bit of panic. It's like, oh, I didn't actually think that somebody was going to place an order and now I actually have to get it to that person. Uh, how am I going to do that? How much is that going to cost? What are the things that I need to consider? Oh, a warehouse. Oh, I thought that my basement was going to do for a little while. And then you start to outgrow that. So I'm going to touch a lot on a lot of these topics today. Um, this is going to be, uh, you know, it can be interactive so uh, we can ask some questions along the way, but there's always going to be some, uh, some period at the end as well for questions too. And then uh, hopefully I can uh, have a little bit of clarity for you as to, uh, as to shipping 101, basically. So Canada Post, we have a little bit of an advantageous position in the market in the sense that uh, two out of three shipments that are shipped for e-commerce uh, from business to consumers are actually shipped through Canada Post. So we have anywhere between 60 to 70 percent market share of the market today. Um, what that gives us is insight as to what the market looks like. So how do shoppers behave? Uh, what are they purchasing? Uh, we have visibility on where the boxes come from and then where they're going to. So we can actually start to look at the metadata and look at what the landscape of the Canadian market actually looks like. So you can see up on the screen here that we've seen tremendous growth. If you look at the last three to four years on e-commerce, we've seen double digit growth year over year. Um, 2014, uh, 2015 over 2014, we saw again 15% growth uh, year over year, and we can start to see the key markets that are growing and at what percentage. And of course, the GTA area, Toronto, uh, the central, southern uh, Ontario, is still growing at significant speed. Um, you know, going anywhere between 23% uh, London, Hamilton, 18%, Toronto is still growing at 18% uh, year over year. That's very interesting because the majority of the population actually lives in that area and we're still seeing leaps and bounds when it comes to e-commerce growth. Um, so not only are more Canadian shoppers shopping online, they're shopping more and more. Um, hence the, uh, the reason why e-commerce is becoming such an important part of any retailer's growth strategy. Now, when we start to think about the online shopping experience, so again, we often focus on that first portion of this graph with the acquisition of the shopper. So, what, um, you know, how do I get them to my site? How do I get them interested in my product? Once you have them on your site, what's the checkout experience? Um, what's important inside of a checkout experience? And, and the reality is that shipping is now critical in that checkout experience. People wanna know how much is it gonna cost uh, to ship the item to me? When do I expect to receive it? Um, you know, where can I track my item? Is it directly on your site? Uh, and then what if, what if it happens that the, the shirt that I bought doesn't fit or the color is not quite right? How do I return it to you? What's your return policy? So I'm gonna take you through um, the whole shopping experience and the whole shopping cycle today. We're gonna to start with um, what happens when somebody places an order, what's important in that order uh, checkout experience and what aspects should you put in there. We're then gonna to touch on how do I retrieve these orders? So uh, do I retrieve them manually? Is there an automated way for me to gather my orders? Do I sell on multiple platforms? We heard from Shopify here today. We have an integrated, um, an integrated solution with Shopify, which is fantastic, but do you also sell on Amazon? Do you sell on eBay? Do you have your own store? Do you have uh, you know, any other marketplaces that you sell on to that you want to integrate, and how do you collect these orders all back to one place? We're also gonna talk about, uh, again, the non-sexy part, the pick and pack and the, the warehousing and how do you set up your products? What type of packaging should you use? Um, you know, how do you go from 
and, and we're going to go a little bit over some of the basics, but uh, what's the difference between having my uh, fulfillment center in my basement or in my spare bedroom and versus a warehouse? And so what are the, the basic things that I need to know? And then the actual shipping of the order. So what are the options? Uh, how can I get the product to the carrier? And then, uh, you know, what are the various speed and, uh, and costs uh, that are associated with that? And then we're going to finish with returns. Um, so returns are a reality of e-commerce, and it's very important in the checkout experience to have that return policy being clear and so on. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to enable an easy uh, and simplistic return solution for your customers. So we're going to talk about uh, online uh, orders first. Uh, when it comes to shipping, uh, there's various different uh, speed and types of products that you can offer. Uh, Canada Post, and, and, and the way I'm going to talk about today, obviously I work for Canada Post, so I'm going to talk mainly about uh, what we have to offer, but if you choose any carrier out there, the same type of principles and the same logic apply. Uh, so I'm not trying to just pitch you on Canada Post today, but I will talk about it from a Canada Post perspective, uh, just because that's the living and breathing that I do. So we have three different types of products when it comes to tracked product. Uh, tracked means barcoded, uh, we can track it through the system. Um, a lot of people uh, you know, think about Canada Post, the letter mail portion of it. Uh, this is really the parcels portion of the products. So we have uh, what we call priority, which is our next day service. Um, Express Post for the ones that want it uh, a little bit faster, and then Expedited, which is really, uh, I guess, the bread and butter of e-commerce. This is where uh, the, the vast, vast, vast majority of e-commerce is leveraging the Expedited uh, service, which you know is, is kind of the, the lower speed, more cost-effective, uh, what we would potentially refer to as the, the cheap and cheerful uh, type of product, but very reliable, that gets it there on time. Um, it's important that to consider the fact that Shoppers want options. So although the majority of e-commerce happens uh, in the expedited stream, meaning the slower, uh, cheaper service, it is still important to offer some of the faster options for your shoppers. So if I forgot that it was my mother's birthday and her birthday is uh, uh, tomorrow and I really need an item to be shipped to me quickly because I want to give it to her before the weekend, um, I'm pretty much willing to pay anything to get that item there faster. So even though it may not be um, a top selling item, uh, it's, it's still important to show these options and to have these options available to your shoppers because you do not know uh, what situations they're in at that specific time and what they would be willing to do uh, in order to get your product faster. How are shipping rates calculated? So um, it, it is, it's somewhat uh, simple yet complicated. Uh, there's a lot of variables in how shipping rates are calculated. It is all based, first of all, on the size and the weight of your product. So, how, so if you're shipping, uh, for example, a large pillow, which is very light when it comes to weight, but quite large uh, when it comes to size, it is always the greater of the two. So volumetric weight versus actual weight, it is always the greater of the two that is selected because this pillow, although it may not be heavy, will take up room in an airplane or in a truck. So the volumetric aspect is important. And it also depends on origin and destination. So if you ship from within Toronto to Toronto versus Toronto to Vancouver, um, obviously the further you have to go in general, um, the more expensive shipping will be. Uh, so take that into account when, uh, when you offer shipping rates, uh, you know, especially if you consider things like free shipping offers and flat rate, which I'm gonna touch on later how shipping is calculated, where your main consumer base is situated, where your warehouse is situated. Um, you know, we've seen especially some of the larger retailers, of course, that can, uh, that can afford that to have potential um, more than one warehouse or more than one location or potentially leveraging one of your store as a mini DC or a mini warehouse to ship closer to uh, your shoppers. For example, out west, if you've got a high uh, user base out west, it may be worthwhile to, to consider shipping from a closer proximity to uh, your shoppers. So when it comes to uh, shipping fees, so it's very important to display and to uh, give the shipping information to your customers as they're checking out. 25% uh, will actually complete an order if shipping fees are given right up front. 
um, it is not well seen and especially um, you know there are a lot of best practices in the market and more and more people are actually uh, displaying shipping fees right up front um, the shopper gets uh, upset when they've selected your product uh, they've entered all of their addressing information credit card information and then you tell them oh by the way it's gonna be $12 for shipping then you get a really high shopping rate of a shopping cart abandonment um, so it's important to display that information right up front so that the customers knows all in what are all the costs associated with placing an order. Now, there's, ver there's various different ways, so it's a bit of a business decision on your side as to how you want to display shipping rates and, and what you want to charge for shipping rates. So you can pass on straight through the rates from origin to destination directly to your shopper exactly what you would pay, for example. So I know that uh, Shopify is one example of a platform that can actually pass on those rates directly to your consumers so that they're just charged exactly what you mean charge. There's other options that we've seen as well, um, and which is flat rate. So you can say, okay, for all orders, it's gonna be a $5 flat rate if you're trying to incite uh, customers to shop on your site and close those transactions. And uh, you can eat up a little bit some of that cost potentially in your margins um, if you're trying to do a promotion or uh, if you want to do a um, flat rate, for example, on um, expedited ground, the cheaper service, but then charge a little bit of an inflated rate on an express product, knowing that the customer is not as price sensitive when they really want it there quickly, and they're willing to potentially pay that extra mile to make up a little bit of some of the costs on the expedited ground. Another uh, thing that we've seen a lot in the market that's really becoming a best practice Although uh, for small business, small medium businesses, it might be a little bit more challenging to do uh, on a permanent basis is the idea of free shipping. So we know very well based on a lot of research and we have a lot of research that you can look at um, on uh, canapost.ca, which I'll give you the link a little bit later on. Um, we have a ton of research obviously that says that Canadian shoppers want free shipping. Is that realistic all the time? Maybe not. Sometimes your margins may allow for that. Sometimes a certain amount of, um, of, sh of order, like let's say over $50, $100, may allow you in your margins to be able to offer free shipping. But the reality is that that cost of shipping is, is a cost of shipping to you. It's a cost of doing business. But could you potentially leverage that for a promotion? for a certain amount of time, or free shipping is, uh, you know, shipping is free on your first order with us. Uh, like th there's ways to play around with this as a promotion, as an incentive, to get people to close uh, that order and finish that shopping cart and order that product and try it from you for the very first time, potentially. We're gonna talk a little bit about how to retrieve orders. So, um, there's, there's various different ways to retrieve orders and, and it, it becomes very challenging, especially if you're uh, selling on multiple different platforms. Um, so there's, you can, you can do that manually. Um, some people still do it one-to-one. -one. Uh, they will pull out the orders out of a Shopify platform, out of Amazon and so on. And then you can either key that into a shipping system or an order management system. Uh, or you can potentially import it as a file, uh, whether you export it CSV file, Excel file, and then import that into a shipping tool. There are tools in the market, though, to help you do that. Uh, Shopify being one of them, uh, directly into their platform. If you are set up as a store on Shopify, uh, you can actually have your order management system basically built into, uh, built into the system. Although that system is uh, somewhat limited in functionality. It's really, really tailored for small, small businesses who have, you know, three to four orders a day potentially, uh, it's basing in its functionality. There are a lot of other systems out there and I know that the Shopify team touched on uh, the app store per se. Uh, so where companies like OrderCup and ShipStation will basically amalgamate all of your orders, not just from Shopify, but actually from all of the different platforms that you're selling into and amalgamate all of your orders all in one place. Um, they do that for a very low monthly fee um, and you can go on these websites to actually get the information um, and I'll touch on it a little bit later on as well so not only do they gather all of your orders and you can have all of your orders in one place you can actually fulfill your orders track your orders all in those systems uh, so they're a lot um, they're a lot more advanced I guess in terms of functionality that you can do um, so, that I, I touched on this a little bit. You have here an example of ShipStation 
uh, and how all of your orders basically from all the multiple platforms can actually come together into one location uh, for you to be able to manage. So obviously, as your business grows, uh, this becomes more and more important as you need to be a lot more efficient in uh, managing, your, uh, managing your time, obviously, and the resources that you have. Pick and pack. Uh, the fun part of e-commerce, the dirty, the dirty part of e-commerce. So, um, so that's a reality. If you're selling a product, you actually need to have uh, a packing station and, a, uh, and a, a shipping station to be able to fulfill. What's important to understand, though, is what does your product mix look like? So do you have SKUs that are a higher turnover? Um, so when, when, you, when you fulfill an order and when you, and when you set up your warehousing, uh, whether again it's in your basement or in that spare bedroom or you've outgrown that and it's now in a warehouse location How do you set up your product? Do you have again products that sell faster that you can set up closer to your pick and pack station? Um, and uh, and I'm going to talk about how to set up a little bit the warehousing facility in a bit um, but how do you maximize your space and How often do you process orders? So do you process order? Once a day at the end of the day, do you process it you know, twice a day? How many orders are you getting? Uh, is it every couple days? Keep in mind though that when we talked about shipping earlier on and shipping costs, customers also expect an expected delivery date. So are you making a promise in your checkout experience as to how quickly that customer is gonna get their product? So it, it's one thing to get the, sh the, the carrier's date uh, displayed to your, to your shopper to say, Okay, you will receive, um, you know, if, if you give it to Canada Post today, I can tell you when I'm going to give it to your shopper. It's going to be in uh, two days or one day, depending on, depending on where it's at. But take into account your fulfillment time. So if, if you promise your shopper, yes, it's going to be there in two days because Canada Post said it was going to be there in two days, well, I can only get it there as fast as I have it in my hands. So you actually need to fulfill that order and give it to the carrier for them to be able to meet that timeline that you've promised to your shopper. So is it 24 hour turnaround, 48 hour turnaround for you to fill that order before you give it to the carrier? So if that's the case, if it's a 48 hour turnaround for you to fulfill that order, make sure that it's clear on your website and make sure that the promise that you give your, your shopper is there so the shopper then it's going to be you're going to receive your orders in four days not in two days if it takes you 24 uh, 48 hours to turn around your, your fulfillment so take that into consideration as your customers are uh, making that order from you um, because it's important to set expectations there's nothing worse than not meeting an expectation if the expectation is set properly and the customers knows what to expect um, then you're golden but uh, if you do not meet that expectation that's when uh, it becomes uh, a challenge and the, the experience becomes negative and then they won't be um, enticed to come back and shopping on your site. Uh, so there's the basics of um, setting up a fulfillment. So I, I will not spend too, too much time on that. Uh, I think every situation is a little bit different, but we do have a blog uh, on CanadaPost.ca that gives you information about how to set up a warehousing uh, and fulfillment center. Um, a few key tips and tricks, though, to keep in consideration is make sure that you have an ingoing station and an outgoing station. So the items that are coming in from your suppliers, uh, products that need to be checked in, products that need to be put on the shelves, uh, either by SKUs, by alphabetical order, however it is, and then you have your outgoing stations for the orders that are ready and um, to be fulfilled and to be shipped. And if, if, if you can, make sure that that outgoing station is close to the door. Because if you have a carrier coming to your home or to your warehouse every day to pick up your orders, you don't want them to have to go through multiple rows of product to get to the back where your pick and pack station is to pick up the items and get them out the door. So just small, and, and, and it's funny when you, know, you, don't, you don't necessarily think about that when you set it up. Um, it's very basic, it's not rocket science here, but it's, 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 um, it makes things much smoother, much easier uh, for everyone and much clearer. And, and put up a sign, out in, um, very simple, but makes it very clear. And it's, it's one thing when you have uh, still yourself and, and your mom or your husband fulfilling orders for you because they know where things are, but as soon as you start to outgrow that and now you have a student coming in to help or that you have, you know, you've got, you've got some more staff, make sure that it's very clear and make sure that your packing station 
has all of the material required. So that we're talking boxes, we're talking um, you know paper or or padding if you uh, if you if your items are fragile, scissors, tape. Um, you know they're very basic things, but it's important to have it all there so that you can maximize the efficiency of those people fulfilling your orders for you. Choosing the right type of packaging. Um, again, I'm not going to spend too too much time on that, but it's important to understand your products. Uh, what your products uh, look like and how they handle being transported. So if your items are fragile, make sure that you consider an extra, at least an extra two inch on each side of whatever box that you uh, choose for additional protection, additional padding. Um, the reality is that when we ship an item, um, there, it, it goes and flows through the system. And the item should be able to withstand a drop of, if you, if you were to hold the box at the end of your hands and drop the box, it should be able to withhold that. I mean, we're obviously not gonna start throwing your box around. That's not the intent. Um, but the reality is that as it goes through a system, it will, uh, it will go through automated facilities and it has to flow through certain areas. So make sure that it is well protected. Um, is, it, is it a box that you have? Is it potentially a, a bag if it's clothing that's a little bit easier um, uh, or cheaper to, to handle? Um, and, you know, the reality is shipping, shipping um, uh, packaging uh, is also part of the total cost of the, of the item that you, that you send. Uh, so make sure that you source suppliers, potentially. Uh, it's always cheaper to buy in bulk. Uh, so I've got a few names of companies. We do not get any type of association with these companies, but uh, there's a few companies that offer uh, packaging in bulk that can help you. Um, and think about that box experience as well. Think about, um, you know, the, the one thing that you need to consider, especially for a small medium business, um, and, and I talked a little bit this morning about the reality that you're competing against the big guys. So you're competing against Amazon, you're competing against Aritzia, you're competing against Lululemon, um, you're competing against those people that have uh, you know, a lot, potentially a lot more resources than you do. The way that you can compete uh, with these people is to have that experience being unique. And, um, and I was on the panel this morning with uh, the woman with the sock company and then the tease company. It's all about that unique experience with your shopper. And, and it's, it's as much on your website as it is when they receive the item at home. So, so it's important to think about, okay, what's that receiving experience gonna look like? Am I going to open this box and have potentially a, a handwritten note saying thank you for your purchase? Uh, or potentially an offer a coupon for your next order? Uh, are you going to have uh, some kind of colored paper in there or is your box going to be branded or like how are you going to retain that customer? How are you going to make this a really beautiful positive experience for your shopper? So it is like th that shipment is a marketing opportunity just as much as your website and you, you know that they've already purchased something from you. Like you have an opportunity to leverage this to keep that customer coming back on your site and making that experience amazing. And there's even people online now that are doing what they call unboxing experience and they basically film themselves uh, doing a little YouTube video and, and when they're like happy with the company and they unbox the, uh, the product that they've purchased. Like just, just think about how you can leverage that as a marketing opportunity for your company. All right, we're gonna dig into the actual shipping of the orders. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how to print a shipping label. So I talked to you earlier about the various different platforms, different ways that you can actually get your orders from all the different uh, platforms or marketplaces that you're selling to. So these, ship, these systems also enable you to be able to print and fulfill a shipping label. Uh, so you've got different options. Uh, some of them are directly embedded into your platform. And Canada Post has done some extensive work. Uh, so actually part of what my team has been doing for the last four years is work directly with these platforms providers. So such as Shopify, Magento, uh, you know, IBM and so on. Like we've, we, we've got the whole list on our Canada Post website. But what we've done is we've enabled that technology to be ready for you so that you don't have to code it yourself 
and it's embedded inside of your platform and you can print the shipping label directly from there. Um, so Shopify, I believe, have uh, shared with, uh, with you a little bit what that new application looks like. Uh, we just launched a new one, a uh, couple of them, uh, actually in the fall of, uh, of 2016. Um, so you can now uh, print labels directly on your Shopify store. There's also other shipping applications. So the, the application that, for example, Shopify has directly built into their store uh, is really tailored for very small businesses. So if you print two to three orders a day, uh, it's fantastic, it's very easily integrated, it's right there. But you do have to enter the information and the labels are created one-on-one. -on -one. So you don't have the ability to do bulk production of labels if you import a lot of orders. So depending on the size of customer that you're at now, um, you may uh, want to consider some other applications such as uh, Order Cup, Ship Robot, Ship Station, which again will gather your orders from all various different selling platforms that you have and can help you fulfill your orders directly into that system um, right, in, right in your, I guess, shop at the uh, Ship Station application. Uh, and you can print shipping labels and monitor your orders directly there as well. They also keep the tracking information, the tracking number, and can send that back and push that information back either directly to your customers or uh, through your platform for them to be able to seek and see where their order is at at that point in time. Canada Post also has some tools. Uh, so keep in mind the other tools that I've shared, uh, most of them have a fee associated with them. Uh, so Canada Post obviously has our own uh, set of shipping tools. Uh, we've got what we call here EST Online, which is available today. We're just about to launch, we're in beta now for a new shipping system called Snapship, which will be available very shortly. Um, and you can access all of those through uh, either your Solutions for Small Business, uh, which if you're interested in, so we have a program called Solutions for Small Business, uh, which basically gives you shipping discounts. Uh, so the more you ship, the more you save. You can sign up, it's completely free. Gives you access to all of the tools that Canada Post has, uh, has to offer. Uh, 